द ग्रेट जज भारत आउट ऑफ हिज कॉजलेस कॉम्पैशन स्टार्टेड एक्सपाउंडिंग ऑन टॉपिक्स ऑफ स्क्रिप्चुरल विजडम बिफोर राजा राहुगण एन ईगर एंड थर्स्टी लिस्नर फॉर डिवाइन नॉलेज He compared this world to a forest or bhava tavi. So he says, "This is the jungle of material existence. Nevertheless, you can cut through this by the grace of the Guru." So he bestows this knowledge, and then he departs from there. Now at this point the Jad Bharat and Raugan samvad comes to an end and at this point also the Vidur and Maitreya samvad comes to an end Vidur offered his pranams to Maitreya Maitreya blessed him and Vidur departed from there So Parikshit now asked Shukadev Maharaj you mentioned that there are on the planet seven oceans and seven continents can you explain to me the geography of the whole universe once again the western world believed that the earth is the center of the universe however here in the bhagavat a different kind of knowledge is being given there are three trilokis five mandals and seven lokas there is the chandra mandal the lok of which is chandra lok and that is on the gravitational pull of the bhumandal the lok of which is bhu lok this bhu lok is not stationary it is rotating on the gravitation of the surya mandal the lok of which is swar lok between bhu and swa is an antariksh called bhuva so bhu bhuva and swa is the first triloki surya mandal is not stationary it is rotating on the gravitation the akarshan of parameshthi mandal the lok of which is jana lok so between swa and jana the antariksh is called maha swa maha jana is the second triloki and this parameshthi mandal is not stationary it is rotating on the gravitation of swayam bhu mandal the loka of which is brahma lok which is the abode of brahma between jana lok and brahma lok is an antariksh called tapa the jana tapa satya is the third triloki now you hear you know in the western worlds seventh heaven in arabic satwa asman and the detail is given here bhu bhuva swa mah jana tapas satya up to the seventh heaven but it also talks about the lower the nether regions tal atal vital sutal mahatal talatal rasatal and patal So Shukadev started describing the torments that happen in the nether regions. Hearing that, Parikshit was frightened out of his wits. Have any of you heard the recitation of the Garud Puran? Yes. 
There's a tradition when somebody dies, at least it's in North India. Panditji recites the Garud Puran. And it has a very graphic description. If you store this in your life, then you will go to this place where animals will come and bite you slowly, not all at a time. You'll have to watch them as they tear your flesh away. And if you did this, then worms will make a home in your body and live there for so long while you bear the pain and so on one would say my my it may not benefit the departed soul but it will definitely benefit those who are sitting in here <laughs> so Parikshit now was scared now in the sixth canto Parikshit says Maharaj these neither regions are so terrible. How can we ensure we avoid them? Parikshit actually doesn't need to ponder over the problem. But it's a divine Leela where God is inspiring Parikshit to ask this question. Because he knows that Shukadev's answer which he gives will be written down and published as a book and we people will read it. So Parikshit is actually asking for our benefit. He says, Maharaj, nobody can ever avoid sin completely. And how do we save ourselves from the consequences? So, Shukadev said, look, Parikshit, Bhakti is so powerful. Just like when there is fog covering our earth in the winter months, the rising of the sun dispels that fog. Similarly, when you engage in bhakti, the power of bhakti which rises in your heart is so powerful, it destroys the consequences of all past sins. If you are engaging in devotion, you don't need to do any separate price chit, any separate repentance. Oh, I did this. I killed a cow. Now what should I do? I hurt this person. Now what should I do? You just focus on bhakti. So listen, Parikshit, let me tell you the story of Ajamil. Ajamil was a powerful Brahman. In his Yuvavastha, he had become Jitendriya. He had conquered the senses. However, in his moments of discretion, he got attached to a Vaishya prostitute. And the consequence was that the two of them, they started residing outside the village by themselves. Now, Ajamil... He resorted to fallen ways. He became a big sinner. There was no sin that he did not indulge in. And through that prostitute, he was having many children. The people in the village were terrorized by this Ajamil. Gone were the days when he used to recite Ved mantras. Now his fame had turned into infamy. If the child did not drink milk, the mother would scare the child, drink it, otherwise Ajamil will come. Such was his notoriety. Ajamil now had nine children from that prostitute. One day, some Mahatmas came to that village. Their rule was that they would only spend the night in the house of a devotee of Vishnu. So they went around asking that who is a Vaishnava in this village? Somebody played a practical joke on the Mahatmas. He said, Maharaj, there is a great pious devotee Vaishnava living outside. His name is Ajamil. You can go and rest in his house. 
these mahatmas they came to ajamel they knocked on the door when ajamel opened the door seeing the dress of the mahatmas he was suddenly taken aback oh my i am so evil and who has come here the mahatmas said that we have this niyam we spend the night in a vaishnav's house we have heard you are a vaishnav can we rest here so ajamel got this temptation i am a sinner if these holy people reside here i may be blessed and benefited so he said please please come and he welcomed them now those mahatmas before going to sleep they had their own proclivity they sat down and started doing satsang and ajamel heard their satsang and that is when he developed remorse he said what have i done all my life i was blessed to receive spiritual knowledge in my childhood and youth and after that i had no excuse to waste my life like this so he felt great regret through the night in the morning he went and fell at the feet of the mahatmas he said maharaj i need to confess i could not tell a lie to you i am no vaishnav in fact i am known in the village to be such a big sinner but the greed to have you in my house was so much i lied before you the mahatma said this is not good but nevertheless you have confessed so we shall grace you he said maharaj now at this stage my mind doesn't go to god how can i engage in devotion the mahatma has found a way that even the evil ajamil should chant the name of god so they said look do this much your last child you name him narayan ajamil accepted that advice the advice of the saintly person should be respected and made shirodhare that is what ajamil did that went in his favor his 10th child he called him narayan and now he naturally became attached to narayan so he would keep calling him narayan narayan when he departed at the time of his death it is natural your mind will gravitate to wherever you are attached don't think oh i will watch movies all my life and while departing i'll say ram <laughs> it will not happen you get teach a parrot to say hari krishna hari ram you know i have one of my devotees in odisha when i go to their house they mana it says hari krishna hari ram it says radhe govind etc now you can teach the tota mana to say ram ram but when you press the throat they will not say ram ram they will say ka <laughs> so you will remember when you are attached and he was attached to his child he said narayan and he fainted at that time he saw this spectacle from one side the yamdoots came he is a sinner and we need to take him and punish him now the yamdoots they had grotesque personalities on the other side came the y- vishnu doots fully resplendent with bejeweled bedecked bodies and they told the yamdoots don't you dare the yamdoots said we are doing our duty who are you to interrupt us the vishnu doot said this is the biggest problem in the world when somebody has been given an authority a government officer and doesn't do the duty properly you don't know what your duty is get out and go and ask your master yamraj the vishnu doot kicked out the yamdoots now ajamil saw this spectacle 
So it's not that he said Narayan and went to Golok. Some people simplify the matter. He heard what had happened, and consequently he came back to consciousness. And then he regretted. He said, "I really need to make amends. I have been blessed specially." I'll tell you once. I went to a very respectable gentleman's house in Los Angeles. He used to come to my katha. So he practically at the senior executive level. So while his wife was preparing the lunch, I was just looking at the bookshelf, and I came across a book, Life After Life, which I had read when I was in school. So I picked it out. It talks about what happens in near-death experiences. So he saw and he said, "Swamiji, have you read this book?" I said, "You know, many decades ago." He said, "Swamiji, it happened to me." He used to speak very little and very grave, so I would not expect that he'd tell a lie. I said, "Really? Yeah, I had a near-death experience. I died." and then i was taken to a place there i found some people looking at a file and i was waiting while they looked at the file and then now my relatives thought that i had died the doctor was declaring me as dead but i was there while they looked at my file and then they looked at me and they said we have made a mistake you have to go back So he said I asked them how can you make a mistake they said no we have made a mistake you have to go back and i was sent back and i came back to life now whether it was a mistake or it was a wake up call for him a special grace from the side of god he really woke up and he changed the course of his life so that is what happened to ajamil as well ganga dwaram upeyay tyakta sarvanubandhana He gave up all his material attachments and went to Haridwar. Even today, if you go from Haridwar into the mountains, there is a place called Ajamil ka Tila, the place where he practiced his austerities. And as a result of those austerities, when his devotion reached perfection, God then took him to the divine abode. Now here, the matter doesn't complete. Shukadev says Parikshit the Yamduts they went back to their master Yamraj and they said Maharaj who are those people and why did they stop us 